Okay, we are going to find the critical numbers for this function here. And of course, we choose how to take the derivative first and then set equal to zero and then solve the equation. So here we go. G prime of y. We have to use the quotient rule here. And I don't really like the problems use y for the input function, but we just have to deal with it. Anyway, quotient rule in action, because it's a quotient. We are going to square the bottom first. So we have y squared minus y plus 1, and then square. And then we put the bottom function here first, right? y squared minus y plus 1. And then we are going to multiply by the derivative of the top function. The derivative of y minus 1 is just 1. So we just multiply by 1. And then for the quotient rule, we have to subtract the top function, which is y minus 1. And then we are going to multiply by the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of y squared minus y plus 1 is first we get 2y and then minus 1. And then the derivative of 1 is 0. And then keep in mind, this right here has two terms. So be sure you use a parentheses. All right? The derivative of this has two terms. So be sure you use a parentheses. Anything more than two terms, or anything more than one terms, you should use the parentheses because here we will have to distribute, right? It's a very common mistake that I still see many of you guys make. But anyway, let's see what we get. On the top, this times one is just that, so y squared minus y plus one, no big deal. And then perhaps I'll multiply this right here and then distribute the negative right here. So y times y, uh, 2y is 2y squared. And then this times this is negative y, and then this times this is negative 2y, and lastly we have the plus 1. Alright, so just work that out. And then this right here is of course 2y squared minus 3y plus 1. And again, we will have to distribute the negative. So negative and then 2y squared, and then negative times negative, so we have the plus 3y, and lastly negative and then times the 1, which is negative 1. Okay? And then all over the bottom, which is y squared minus y plus 1 squared. Okay, let's see if there's anything we can cancel. For the top, we can combine this and that together. Alright, so we get negative y squared. And then next, minus y plus 3y, that will be plus 2y. And then finally, 1 minus 1, they cancel out. So no more. And then over the denominator, y squared minus y plus 1, and then square that. OK. This is just the derivative. And now for the critical number, we are going to set this to be equal to 0. And the truth is, in this case, we also should look at where the derivative is undefined. But the thing is that if you set the bottom to be 0, that will be where the derivative is undefined. But once you do that, you will see that that will also make the original function 0. So it's actually not on our domain. So you don't have to worry about that. So in general, when we have a rational function, if you want to find the critical numbers, just go ahead and differentiate it. And then just go ahead and look at the top. Right? So this right here will tell us. Look at the top, which is negative y squared plus 2y, and you set that to be 0, and you solve it. Don't worry about the bottom, because again, this bottom appears in the original already. If this is 0, that means the original will also be 0 on the bottom. That means it's not even our domain, so don't worry about that. All right, so once we look at this, we can factor a little bit. We can factor y or negative y up to your taste. So factor of y, you get negative y and then plus 2, and that will be 0. So in fact, we have two critical numbers. The first one is y equal to 0, so let me write that down. You put y to be 0. And the other one, you put this factor to be 0, so that means y will be equal to 2, right? Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So these are the two answers for the critical numbers for these functions, and we are done.